Okay, well, thank you and good morning. It is in the 1940s that scientific research revealed that the phenotypes of living organisms depend on genetic information carried in the genome. In the course of the subsequent decades, it became more and more clear that the life activities depend uh, also on environmental conditions, including the living and the material compositions of their habitats and various temporal impacts from the wider environment. We therefore realize that living organisms depend both on their own genetic information and on various environmental conditions. The latter also exert their impact on the biological evolution at the population level. Cohabitation of various kinds of living organisms can greatly facilitate the life of individual organisms. Human beings and many other eukaryotic organisms have become known to strongly depend on cohabiting microorganisms in so-called microbiomes. Thereby, various kinds of bacteria live in symbiosis with humans animals or plants. Their hosts provide to the cohabiting bacteria nutrition and the bacteria help their hosts in food digestion and in other essential functions. In contrast, several pathogenic microorganisms, both bacteria and viruses, occasionally infect human beings, as well as eukaryotic animals, and render them sick. But we have to be aware that only a minority of bacteria are pathogenic, whereas beneficial microbiomes contain permanently a large number of non-pathogenic bacteria. Another obvious interdependency resides in the provision of nutrition to other kinds of organisms. Remind that wild animals generally cater and hunt their food in their habitats. In order to facilitate their lives, human beings started about 10,000 years ago to domesticate food plants and animals, what is known as agriculture. Until relatively recently, agriculture was mostly carried out manually in small scale. Many living organisms depend to some degree on environmental factors such as the climate, temperature, cosmic radiation, air pollution, and weather conditions. These can vary in the course of time both intrinsically and by impacts of human activities. Some of these interdependencies caused by the human civilization risk to strengthen negative impacts on the living conditions and thus also on the individual lives of various kinds of living beings. In cases of a global impact, it can be quite difficult to ameliorate the situation at a global level. 
As a result of the long past biological evolution, our planet benefits of a high diversity of species of living organisms. As a consequence, any habit that usually contains a relatively high number of different species and this richness can be quite beneficial for the cohabiting species. For this, as well as for other reasons to be explained below, our civilization should avoid causing any negative impact on the treasure of this high biodiversity. Losing a rich biodiversity risks to affect also human life, as shown by the two following examples. A segment of genetic information can occasionally become horizontally transferred from an organism to another kind of organism where it can become part of the genome and exert its, uh, uh, exert its activities. Horizontal gene transfer is one of the natural strategies of biological evolution, which I will explain uh, below. In its obvious, uh, it is obvious that a loss of such rich biodiversity can reduce available genetic information and thus also affect the biological evolution of other kinds of organisms. Progressing scientific knowledge can reveal hitherto unknown biological potentials residing in a member of the biodiversity. In order not to lose such a function, op upon a future extinction of the species in question, one can try to save this genetic potential by transferring it in the laboratory into another kind of organism which can be expected to express the gene product under consideration. This can allow the investigator to isolate the product that might contribute to a technological advance of our civilization. A striking example is the horizontal transfer into appropriate bacteria of the genetic potential of some spiders to produce silk-like fibers. Biological evolution is a very slowly ongoing process. It is not easy to be perceived. It is largely thanks to intensive research with bacterial populations that a number of molecular mechanisms have become known to occasionally produce genetic variants and thus the, to contribute to biological evolution after nat natural selection for those mutants that show a functional improvement for living in their habitat or sometimes for adapting to an alternative habitat. One can assign identif the identified individual molecular mechanisms to, of mutagenesis to just a few strat natural strategies of biological evolution. According to the, according to the so far acquired knowledge, one of these strategies is based 
on local mutagenesis affecting one or a few adjacent nucleotides in the genome. A second strategy of spontaneous mutagenesis involves the genomic, a genomic segment, which can become transposed, duplicated, deleted, or inverted in the genome. And the third strategy is based on the already mentioned horizontal gene transfer that allows the recipient organism to acquire a, a functional genome, uh, uh, sorry, that allows the recipient organism to acquire a functional genome segment from a donor organism. This kind of acquisition of foreign genetic information is a very efficient process thanks to the universal genetic code that is the common language of different kinds of organisms. For some of these mutagenesis events, products of so-called evolution genes carried in the genome are involved in intragenomic DNA rearrangements. Other evolution genes limit the frequency of mutagenesis events. Some other mutagenesis processes occur by impact of non-genetic factors such as environmental mutagens, short-living isomeric forms of biologically active molecules, or random encounter. We are aware that Mother Nature succeeds to cause only rarely a spontaneous genetic variation so that the genetic potential of most individuals in a given population remains preserved. The here described mutagenesis processes occur mostly randomly on the genome and randomly in time. Therefore, only a minority of novel genetic variants reveals upon natural selection, a uh, functional improvement. It is thanks to intensive biological and technological research, since about 200 years only, that acquired scientific knowledge and its applications have considerably improved the human health as well as human life facilities of various kinds such as communication, traveling, or procuring of nutrition. Biomedical knowledge and its applications have led in a few decades to a considerably increased human life expectancy, in particular in developed countries. It is our duty to help also populations in developing countries with high rates of child mortality to benefit of this available biomedical knowledge. As far as we know, any kind of living organism has a stat statistical average of life expectancy. Recently acquired insights into some kinds of organisms indicate that genetic alterations or behavioral or environmental impacts can occasionally 
somewhat increase the life expectancy of a given species. This has recently led to reflect and discuss the possibility of producing, uh, of, sorry, discuss the possibility of providing to living organisms, including Homo sapiens, immortality. That is an eternal life. According to my mind, this goal is not compatible with its wonderful natural process of biological evolution, contributing to adapt a species to changing living conditions. It is well known that an appropriate daily diet provides to our body an ener the energy required for life activities. Missing a nutritional source of energy is felt as hunger. It, is lately, it has lately also become known that various biological activities may require so-called micronutrients, such as vitamins or some chemical elements. A lack of an essential micronutrient causes so-called hidden hunger or unfelt hunger and can lead to an organic misdevelopment. An example is the lack of vitamin A that is required for the correct neuronal development of a child, both during its embryonic development in the pregnancy and during the first few years after birth. In this case, a lack of sufficient vitamin A leads to a tremendous neuronal uh, misdevelopment and can cause the death of the child in its first few years, or in other cases, blindness. It will be an important task for the scientific research to explore any other effects affecting health by the lack of sufficient micronutrients. Thereby, acquired knowledge can be expected to prevent misdevelopments by providing the necessary specific micronutrients in due time. Ideally, this goal can be reached by enriching con commonly used food crops with the required micronutrients, having the capacity to prevent hidden hunger in the persons in question. The mentioned, as mentioned above, agriculture had been carried out manually for a long time. In many countries, a shift has occurred during the past decades by working with tractors with attached specialized machines to carry out the cultivation, the taking care, and the harvest of food crops. These cultivations are often combined with spreading herbicides or insecticides in order to eliminate other plants and insects from the large monocultures of agricultural crops. This practice can make important contributions to seriously reduce the high biodiversity.
as we have already discussed, a steady but very slowly progressing biological evolution produces the present rich biodiversity. This permanent creation must have its origin about 3,500 million years ago with unicellular organisms. Excuse me, Professor. We have a very strict machinery behind, but we will completely ignore it, more or less. Uh, since we started very early, please go on. Yeah. I'm aware yeah. that I talk too early. I started <laughs> not only after uh, half. We have time. We have time. We have time. We have time. Yes. I'm soon I'm through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have time. Well, I wanted to uh, say a few words on uh, reflection on future living conditions on our planet followed by from quantitative to qualitative growth, this idea of the growth as we still have it uh, uh, is uh, not feasible with maintaining a big biodiversity on our planet. And I uh, will make a few conclusions. If you want uh, me uh, to jump over these other things, I will go to the conclusions. No, no, please go ahead. We have enough time. Oh. We, have enough time. we have enough time, yeah. <laughs> um, good. I reflect on future living conditions on our planet Earth. As we have already discussed, a steady but very slowly progressing biological evolution produces the present rich biodiversity. This permanent creation must have its origin about 3,500 years ago with unicellular organisms. According to astrophysical notions, our sun, can be expected to still spend energy to its planets for about 4,000 million years. However, we do not know how long our planet Earth will exist and contain habitats to host different kinds of living organisms. Let us thus hope that the human civilization in its rich biodiversity can have a time horizon of about one million years. During this period of time, biological evolution can be expected to steadily continue slowly. As we have seen, the natural strategy of horizontal gene transfer can bring about qualitative improvements to evolving organisms. For this reason, it is important to maintain the rich biodiversity on our planet Earth. Future scientific investigations are expected to allow our civilization to reach this goal by preventing to carry out activities leading to partial extinction of species existing in the diversity of life. In addition, we also should take care not to entirely use up essential raw materials by our life activities. Our planet Earth has a consistent size and therefore a limited capacity to host living organisms. In view of the conceptual relevance of a high biodiversity, a given species of living uh, organisms should not overgrow other kinds of organisms. The here already 
discussed interdependence of different kinds of organisms, both for their life activities and for their biological evolution, is of a high conceptual relevance for the living world. A logical conclusion from this insight is that no, spe no species should quantitatively overgrow the others. However, qualitative growth can any time be welcome. Applying this concept of the human population uh, to the human population is of primary relevance for a healthy long-term persistency of the human civilization on our planet. I come to the conclusions. As members of the human species, we have the privilege of a high intellectual capacity and we realize that our life interdependent interdependence on the presence of and activities of many other species of living organisms. Based on these long-term insights, the Christian religions attribute to Homo sapiens the role of a good shepherd of the creation by taking care of any other kinds of organisms and their habitats. Following this conceptual task, we are expected to protect the presence of a rich diversity of other kinds of living organisms. This essential conclusion is based both on a religious tradition and on more recently acquired scientific knowledge. As shepherds, we have the responsibility to protect long-term living conditions, including the natural process of biological evolution. In addition, it is our task to bring the here described worldview to the attention of whole, all human beings on our planet. This requires a well-qualified education applied to human societies worldwide. Thank you for your attention.